as I walk back from dropping off a sample at a core facility, I thought I would say a few words about core facilities. Um, so different research institutions have a bunch of core facilities for things like sequencing, mass spectrometry, imaging, antibody production. Basically, they are groups of experts at some sort of technique, typically. And if you want to use that technique in your research, but say it's not like the focus of your research, so you don't want to spend like bazillions of years training how to be a mass spectrometrist, spectrometrist, I would even say it, um, but you still want to take advantage of that powerful tool for measuring like the mass of protein, so trying to figure out proteins and modifications and all sorts of stuff. So there's cool stuff that you can do with mass spectrometry, but it takes this like fancy fancy equipment and a bunch of training to actually like know how to do it yourself. So you can like submit a sample to a core facility for them to do it for you. And so typically um, these core facilities can also offer training um, and sometimes like if you know how to actually use the technology, um, then you can um, or if they train you to use it, then you can actually use it in their facility yourself. And so that how it works is typically like the institution is going to, or like your lab like pays to the facility depending on what the services are. Um, these facilities also often like offer consultation. Um, so a lot of times there'll be like free things that they offer as well as then like there'll be um, like discount rates because they're not trying to like make a bunch of money off of you. Um, so yeah, so there are different types of facilities um, for various things um, and they do, some of them like just provide like services and stuff. Um, so for example, there's like a media core which will make um, like growth media for bacteria and other types of cells and stuff. Um, and so like our lab doesn't like buy into it or whatever so we make all, we make our own stuff. Um, but for some labs or whatever, if they're using a ton of it then they can um, like get it through this facility. Um, there's also uh, facilities for like antibody production. So like say if there's a protein that you want to study and there aren't any antibodies for it, um, you can like submit a sample of a protein to this facility and then, then they will like do either, well there's different methods they can do, some sort of like screening to find recombinant antibodies um, with like yeast and phages and all sorts of cool stuff like that or like traditional methods with llamas and stuff like that. Um, there are also, let's see, facilities for, yeah, like imaging. So like microscopy and stuff like that. Um, there's, they can, so different cores can help you with like different elements of things too. So like with the actual technique itself, as well as with like designing experiments, analyzing the results. Um, there are like informatics cores and stuff that can help you. There are statistics cores. There's like a core for everything. It's pretty, um, pretty wild. Um, so sometimes the thing is just like trying to find which core is, um, has what you need. Um, yeah, so those are a couple of the main cores that I like most used to or whatever, but I was looking around and there's like types of cores in this facility. Um, in addition to cores, so the cores um, provide the services, they provide often training, um, sometimes access to equipment, um, consultation, all of this various stuff. And additionally, um, here there's this really cool thing like in our building, it's called the CAT, like Center for Advanced Technology. And basically it's just a room with like a ton of different equipment that you can use. Like, as, I mean, you have to bring your own reagents and everything, um, like your own pipettes and all that stuff. But they have um, like all sorts of really cool stuff. So they have a bunch of just like basic things for like shakers and incubators and centrifuges and PCR machines and qPCR machines. And then they have things for like DNA analysis. Um, and so they have like a bio analyzer and a, like a tape station so you can see. Um, it's kind of like it does a gel electrophoresis in a machine. Um, so you can take, put a sample in and it's like you're running an agarose gel, but it's on a tiny little chip. Um, and so you can get information about like size distribution if you're preparing like a library for sequencing and that sort of thing. And then they have sequencers um, and 
they have oh they have like a laser cutter um and like a 3d printer which i haven't used any of that stuff yet but it sounds pretty seems pretty cool um but yeah so it's really cool that they have this because it doesn't make sense for each lab to purchase their own like giant microscope or whatever if well just doesn't make sense because they're not going to be using it like all the time plus there's like no space to hold all that stuff in each lab um and so this way all these different labs can share this equipment um so we just have to like book it in advance and like the there's like a website basically it's really really awesome um so if you're like at a research institution like see if there's something like that um in your building or your institution or whatever because it's really cool and yeah so i hadn't known about those before um but yeah thankfully for me too it's just like a couple of floors down um but yeah so that's just some basic information about cores and shared equipment and various things like that if you, even if you don't have like a one of those cool like cat like things um often you can if there's a lab on campus um maybe they're they'll let you um like use some of their equipment when they're not using it and that sort of thing so it goes back to that whole like networking knowing people all that stuff that uh when you're starting out it's it's hard but i'm starting to know some people some networking type stuff um and then yeah, it's basically, I don't know. I guess that's all I had to say. Well, hope that helps you, bye. <laughs> okay, one more thing. They're also often like listservs. So we have like this PSA listserv or whatever for like where people, if they are looking for some sort of reagent or equipment or something, you can send a request and then it'll go to all the people on the, like an email will go to all the people on the listserv. So even if you don't know, um, directly like someone that has something that you need um, you can potentially find it that way as well as just like asking around um, who knows who knows who has what and stuff um, sometimes there are like also like slack channels various like more informal things sometimes when I'm looking for something well not like equipment but like a reagent or something I'll just like walk through the labs and see if they look like something I mean like it's one of those places where there's like the all the bays and so you can see like does this lab look like they have stuff that is the type of thing that I'm looking for and then um like asking people from the lab like whether they actually have the thing that I'm looking for um so people are usually really nice and trying to be helpful and yeah so <laughs> now I think I'm done